This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 43 of the Wisdom by Oisa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti. And this is Sophia Gala. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network. This podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association, WISA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. Sophia joins us again today as usual, and I've been told that today's guest already has a permanent showroom. Sophia, can you share with us uh, their exact location? Yes, yeah, so the DMC tour here on West and West so starts on the southeast corner. So right next to the freight elevators, one of the many freight elevators in room 14997, you can find Echo Brand, which is today's guest. And then if you walk north, you'll come come across STS Ranchware and Double D Ranchware. Both of them are also WESA members. And then you'll find Morris K and Sens, who we had a great interview with last week in room 14593. And again, it's the permanent Western and English floor. And the 11th is the temporary WESA floor. The DMC is a huge complex. Um, it sounds like you're pretty familiar. Can you share more details about the campus? Yeah, so it is a big complex, but it's also a modern complex, and it's actually really, really easy to navigate. So the campus has three buildings, but West of the Show will only be held in the biggest building, the World Trade Center. It's also the only one of the three that has more than five stories. In fact, it has 15, so it's really easy to spot. And during our show, there will be several elevators for buyers that will only stop on West's floors, and they can easily just get up and down very quickly. And we do offer limited valet parking as well. And then the general WESA parking map can be found on WESATradeShow.com. I have a quick question, Sophia. Where is the WESA office going to be? We do have a WESA office. We will actually not be there during the WESA trade show. We will just be in there before and after and sort of get everything ready. We will be either down to check in um, buyers and exhibitors or Kristen and I probably just be on one of the two floors at all times. Oh, okay. What well, got its start four decades ago as the first company to use machines to produce team roping ropes, the company has grown into a multi-brand company marketing ropes, saddles, pads, protective boots, cinches, bits, spurs, winter blankets, and sheets. Under its corporate identity of Equibrand, the company's flagship brands include Cashel, Classic and Rattler Ropes, Classic Equine, and Martin Salary. According to his website, Equibrand's goal is to support every individual who strives to be the best at what they do with a horse. Joining us today is Brad Vance, Vice President of Sales for the company. Hey, Brad, thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy day to spend some time talking with our listeners at the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. You're welcome. Glad to be here. I imagine it's always a busy day for you. You've you started with the company actually in a finance position, and now you are heading up the sales and marketing. How did that transformation take place? And had you always been part of the Western and Cowboy sports lifestyle, even when you were running the numbers? Well, um, I have to back up a little bit. I've actually done two stints, two different tours of duty with Equibrand. I did right out of college in 1996. I did an internship out of Tarleton State and was actually hired by the company uh, summer, spring, summer of 96. Worked here through 1999 fall, and then I went and did a suit and tie thing in the financial world for about four years and then came back late 2002. So started out in sales with Equibrian, went into the financial advisory finance world for about three, four years, and then came back in 2002 and been here, I guess, almost 18 years now this fall. 
Well, by now you should know the company pretty well. Yes, sir. Yep, it's ever changing, but yeah, I'm pretty familiar with Equibrand. As you look at the website and look at the company, there is such a variety of brands and products, but I suspect this was not all put together haphazardly. I suspect there is a strategy and a plan as you add products and as you add brands. Am I correct? Yes, sir. The original company was Classic Rope, and it was uh, started in 1986. And we made team ropes, or actually they made team ropes. I wasn't involved with the company then, but then it it grew, and the sport of team roping grew, and we had some people get involved with the business and uh, invested in it and grew it some more. And then Equibrand was formed shortly after we started our second brand, which is called Classic Equine. It was a startup company in about 1995, and we just loved all things horse, And we thought we could uh, come with products that made sense for other disciplines besides roping. So Classic Equine was formed in 95, and then Rattler Rope Company was an acquisition. And that happened in about 97, 98, which is another rope company. And then Martin Saddlery was also purchased in 98 also. And then Cashel Company was purchased in about 2005. So there's actually five product brands underneath the umbrella of Equibrand. So there's Classic Rope, Classic Equine, Rattler Rope, Martin Salary, and Cashel Company. But of course, there's dozens of individual products that you now offer through your retailers to the consumer. And I suspect uh, part of the uh, attraction of those brands were the individual product categories and SKUs uh, that they made available to market through your brand. Yes, sir. We just, uh, we wanted to be all things horse. You know, if you uh, own a horse and compete, great. If you own a horse and want a trail ride or just enjoy that horse in your Western way of life, we want to build something, a product that first and foremost works, you know, solves a problem, gives you a competitive edge, just makes your horse life better. What's changed, if anything, in terms of what the horse owner wants today compared to what you started off with in terms of products or quality or materials. Um, I'm assuming the products today are not 100% identical. I know the ropes keep coming out with different different versions, but how do you keep track of a, how a particular product, a particular item is going to be successful in market or what changes you might like to make? We have a ongoing commitment to product development. And we really attack it by, you know, within, by brand, by category. But we also look at it from the horse owner's point of view. You know, what what out there truly makes a difference in the horse owner's life? So, yeah, we're innovative. We introduced a little over 400 new SKUs this year. And we have a... 400? Universe. Wow. Yes, yep. We have a product universe that we currently manage, manufacture, market, sell of about 2,700 different items. That's something I wanted to touch on. I wanted to make sure and and talk about, you mentioned being innovative, and I would say, you know, constantly staying with the ever-changing times and needs of the competitors. But one of those things this year that we saw was, you know, they deemed it the year of breakaway, and you guys were, you were right there to help create new ropes for the breakaway ropers. I know Jackie Crawford assisted in making your your Spitfire rope. And so I think that was something really important to to watch for and, and really depicts exactly the statement that you just made is there was a need and you guys were right there to to serve that need. Yeah, we're really, really lucky, really blessed and work hard to be part of all of the different disciplines and competitive platforms. And Breakaway has really, really evolved over the last 18 to 24 months and through different, you know, influenceable person, endorsers, ambassadors, if you will, 
our rope development team just spends time with those people and, and said, you know what, what do you want? What do you need? And through trial and error and prototypes and spending time in the arena and we developed the Spitfire rope, which has been very, very successful. And it's really cool to see the sport of breakaway get to be in front of a much bigger audience through, you know, the American rodeo or through the different breakaway associations that are out throughout the United States. But it's, it's cool for those ladies to have a chance to compete and we want to build product that uh, serves their, their need. Sure. And and something really unique before we recorded this interview, of course, this is a pre-recorded interview. And as just before we recorded today, I was watching a match roping on Facebook. And Jackie Crawford was one of those gals uh, roping. And of course, your guys' name was right in there supporting that match roping that they uh, put on today for, you know, all of us at home sitting and, and, and dealing with the COVID-19 and the social distancing. And so very cool to um, see your guys' name on that when I watched that. And I just thought that was a fun fact for today. But Mike also mentioned the the multitude of products that you have under the five brands. And I'd love to hear your insight about the best way that you have found to manage and market so many different brands, but yet under one umbrella. Well, we're, we're blessed with great people. I think that's um, in great consumers and great endorsers. So really it's, it's always going on. We're always, we have new product meetings, but it's, it's, always it's continual and as far as marketing those you know our marketing team basically once we get through the the initial product idea and then we get prototype and then we get testing and then we get our endorsers influentials to weigh in once we get it to a point where we want those competitive people to test it and torture it and make sure it's going to meet you know those tough needs of of horse people once we feel like we have it right then we work with marketing and we want to you know of course brand it and we want to you know let the consumer know about it we want the dealer and our salespeople to know about it and usually if we go through the process and we get it right that product gains its own momentum after the consumer gets it in this world of social media and reviews and the word spreads very fast but sure um, we want to we want to we want to do a good job with all of those those parts and pieces to give that product its own own identity and it have its own noise. Sure. And correct me if I'm I'm wrong, but for for years and and long before social media or influencing that we talk about now, you you guys have teamed up very frequently with professional athletes, which would be a big part of your marketing. As I mentioned to just today Jackie Crawford and and helping design that Spitfire rope and things of that nature but what a big difference that must be and you've been there with Equal Brand for so many years you have so much history just to see that evolve in the way that you've teamed up with the professional athletes kind of from way back long time ago up until now and and the new the new way of doing it through social media yeah Great ideas come from within our own people here because there's a lot of horse owners and a lot of competitors that walk in and out of this office and the different production facilities that we have. But we also are blessed and very appreciative of our endorsers and our influentials. And when we do have a product and you want to get, you know, say a three-month test on something that would normally be compared to maybe a year in a normal horse owner's life, um, we get some great feedback because that's what those people do. They may put a product on and off eight to 10 horses a day, six days a week, you know, where a normal horse owner may ride one to two horses a day, four days a week for 50 weeks. So we're really fortunate that we get to work with those types of people and sure. they're pretty demanding. The horse owner today is very demanding of you know, they want more value for their dollar that they're going to spend. Sure. And at the end of the day, I think we all have one common feeling, and that is it's the love of the animal, the horse. Anybody that, whether you're in rodeo or any type of Western or equestrian 
event. It's all it's all about the love of the horse and really taking pride in their care and using products that you can depend on and are durable. And I'll never forget my first classic pad. Was, I, I think I received it in 1999 and I can't tell you how many years I, I used it and what great quality and, and durability it had. And I, I will never forget it. It was green. I still remember <laughs> what it looked like, but uh, very, very important. Mike, I know you don't use any of these products, but would you like to jump back in? Well, I don't, but you brought up an interesting point. How long on average, maybe ropes are, I'm sure, different than other things, but how long on average do you uh, does it take to get a product to market once you've decided the market needs it? Boy, it varies. It can be, uh, the barrier to entry can be pretty, pretty quick, you know. It's really so individual, but the one thing you know, we've had products come to market in three to six months based on a prototype, based on testing, based on getting it right the first time. And we've had products that we've worked on for three years before we decided it was it was ready to market. So it's hard to really put a timeline to that because it's, it's a little bit of an imperfect science. Understood. Also, let's talk a bit about your distribution channels. Now, I'm going to, I was looking I'm going to look in a minute here, but I'm presuming that there's a significant part of your distribution channel are dealers and retailers. Is, is there also uh, an online sales capability in the company now? So way back from the infant stages of what was Classic Rope and then once Equibrand was formed, we've always been about, we're a wholesale manufacturer. We build product to sell to a dealer and a dealer is going to service that consumer in their market area. As We've grown and, you know, business has changed. A few of our brands do have a direct-to-consumer channel, but we're still very, very dealer-centric. We have a full sales, marketing, product development, production team, and we take care of our dealers and we try to offer them great customer service. Well, you offer them great customer service and you offer them a pretty broad product line. Which is a, a phenomenal, you know, a phenomenal combination. I might mention a bit while we're on there. This is, of course, the Wisdom by Wessa podcast, and that's been your experience in working with Wessa as you go to market. Yeah, Wessa is, you know, it's the Super Bowl market, the largest wholesale trade show that our Western industry gets to attend, and it's a place where the Western industry meets. It's been a fun great experience for our brands and Equibrand to be part of it. And we're looking forward to many more years of supporting WESA because I think it's important for the manufacturers and the retailers to come together in a, in a place where we can all do business and exchange trends and ideas and roll the ball forward. Well, of course, that's the foundation, if you will, of the underpinning of any great trade association is to provide that for the industry it serves. And, you know, we're so pleased that we can be a part of that producing this podcast. But uh, even more so, it's more fun to have great guests like you who can give us their perspective from out in the field. You know, Casey has been on horses and rodeoed all her life. I've been in marketing all my life. Together, we can pull this podcast off, but it doesn't work until people people like you come on and give us the inside story on the brands that we all know. So we really do appreciate you giving us this time. Well, we're, we're humbled and thankful that WESA and Horse Radio Network is reaching out to us. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. The show notes and links from today's show can be located at the website wisdombywessa.com. And, of course, we'd love to hear your feedback. There is a contact link on that website. The Wisdom by Wisa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players, and you can also listen on the Horse Radio Network app on your iOS or Android phone. You just search Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free, and it's super easy to use. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Wisdom by Wisa podcast. Wisa, where the industry meets.